In this video on progen, I want to cover specifically the protein sources that I've combined to create my progen formula. Now, I've already covered the fact that this is the only protein that actually lists the exact amount of each source of protein in the protein powder, not a percentage, but actual grams. But a lot of people are starting to have questions about, well, what type of whey protein is this? It's a, obviously, it's a whey protein isolate, but those who are a little more supplement savvy know that there's different ways that you can manufacture whey protein isolate. Now, there's a process that's called ion exchange, which is a bit harsher in nature on the whey protein. This process basically uses harsh chemicals to isolate the whey protein and make it pure. However, the problem is that you lose a lot of what we call microfractions from the whey, particularly the whey peptides, which now we know are absolutely critical to the benefits of whey. Ion exchange typically removes all of the whey peptides. Ion exchange also causes the whey to lose all of its lactoferrin and glycomacropeptides. These microfractions have important properties that are provided by the way. These can boost immune function, help you to prevent infection. They provide a host of benefits that go far beyond what we think of a typical protein is going to deliver with just muscle growth. And yes, they're also critical for promoting muscle growth, particularly the peptides. Now there's another way to process whey protein isolate. And this involves what we call microfiltration followed by ultrafiltration. And that's the processing that I used for the whey isolate that's in Progen. Now, microfiltration followed by ultrafiltration basically just uses filters with no chemicals, which retains those important peptides, those microfractions that I was discussing. So, if you're questioning what type of whey protein isolate is in ProGym, you can rest assured knowing that yes, it's whey protein isolate from microfiltration and ultrafiltration. That's a big difference. Now, what about the micellar casein? That's the real slow component of ProGym. Now, remember, what the research has now found is that using just whey alone is not the best way for muscle growth. Yes, whey is critical. Those microfractions from whey are important. Its fast digestion rate is important. But adding a very slow digesting protein, micellar casein, extends that anabolic effect from the protein powder and can help build more muscle growth increase protein synthesis, keep it elevated for longer, that's going to lead to greater muscle growth. It works very well. But you need a real slow digesting casein. When we talk about caseins in ProGym, I have micellar casein. Now, you've probably seen caseinates. Sodium caseinate, calcium caseinates. What's the difference between caseinates and micellar casein? It's a huge difference. I only use micellar casein. Now, micellar casein means that that casein is in its natural form. When you consume casein, it forms micelles in the stomach. And if you basically think of an onion, the layers of an onion, these micelles digest very slowly because it's basically like stripping off layers of an onion. And that's how it digests very, very slowly. Well, caseinates are sort of like the ion exchange of whey protein isolates. Caseinates involve harsh chemicals, namely acid, to precipitate out the casein. Now these acids can disrupt that natural structure of the micellar casein, those micelles. Well, this is good for mixability. Caseinates mix a lot easier when you shake up your protein shake, and that's because those micelles, that globular portion of casein is, is disrupted, so it mixes better. However, this makes the casein digest faster. Well, that's what you, you've already got the whey in your protein blend 
for the fast digesting. Now you want to focus on that very slow digesting. Casein. So getting a casein that uses casein it's, is not the way to go because, like I said, it, it disrupts the natural structure of the micellar casein and it increases the digest, you know, and enhances it, makes it faster. That's the last thing you want. You want the slowest casein available with your whey protein. Another problem with that acid is it disrupts some of the microfractions that are in casein as well. And these are important just like the whey. These are also important. Whereas micellar casein is only, only involves a filtration process, much like the whey protein isolate that's microfiltered and ultrafiltered. This is all filtration based proteins and protein. The filtration process is a much gentler process because none of these harsh chemicals are used that can disrupt these tiny fragments, which we're just beginning to really understand of how they work to enhance muscle growth and provide a host of other health benefits as well. Micellar casein is truly the only way to go when it comes to casein. Now, many of you have wondered, well, I have milk protein isolate in progen. Why did I use milk protein isolate? Well, milk protein isolate is just the milk protein in its natural form. And what we know, and most of you probably know, is that milk protein is 20% whey and 80% casein. So why didn't I just use more of the micro-filtered and ultra-filtered whey protein isolate and the filtered micellar casein to make up that remaining bit of whey and casein. Why did I use milk protein? Well, many of you may have heard me say that the gym supplement science line, is, this is not a supplement business. This is an educational format for me to teach you guys what supplements look like, what good supplements are. And there's a lot of misconceptions about milk protein. People think it's an inferior protein. Absolutely not. For long before we had whey protein powders, bodybuilders knew to drink milk. They knew to consume dairy. And that provided milk protein in that 20% to 80, 20% whey, 80% casein. And that caused remarkable muscle growth along with the rest of their diet and their training programs. Okay, milk protein is a very high quality protein. It's also a very gentle protein. It involves just the filtration process. So I mainly put it in here as a teaching element to show you that this is a very high quality protein. It's filtered and when it's filtered that means it maintains the micellar casein structure and the true whey structure of milk protein. That means all those microfractions are intact. It's truly the perfect protein source. You've heard me say a lot, even a 50 whey, 50 casein is not the best way to go. We need a little bit of whey, but more casein than we originally thought to produce muscle growth. Now, what I have found is the percentage breakdown in progen to be the best with the egg protein. I'll get to that in a second. So that's why I didn't go with a straight up milk protein, but that would also be fairly decent. I've just tweaked it a bit based on what I found in my lab, the gym, to work ideally at these exact amounts. This is a very high quality protein source that gives you those that micellar casein and the whey in, in the form that it's supposed to be in with very little disruption. Very, very gentle processing. What the research has shown is that when you have that fast, very fast whey, a bit of very fast whey, mainly a larger amount of casein, and then a medium digesting protein sort of in the middle to bridge the gap that promotes muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth better than just whey. Well, what I have found is really it's the whey that's 
fast way and a slow casing that are the most critical. Slightly less way than casing, a bit more casing. Most people are surprised. And, you know, my views on this have changed over the years as I've worked with athletes and, and uh, other individuals and the research has come out in the laboratories to show that, you know, we used to really focus on whey and then we found the casein enhanced muscle growth. And so we started adding some casein, but really focused. Now we know it's actually the flip side of that. You want a good deal of whey, but you really want to focus more on the casein aspect. But I have found that then you add a medium digesting protein just a little bit now with the egg protein. Now, if you've watched some of my videos in the past, I've recommended using soy. And that's what a lot of the research has shown is that having soy as that medium digesting protein works great. Now, I left out soy for a number of reasons. The first is that many people have misconceptions, guys in general, that soy protein is going to decrease their testosterone, raise their estrogen. That, that's just not true. The reason, However, some people are still concerned. So I didn't want anybody to have any of those concerns. Okay, a second reason is genetically modified soy. It's almost impossible to find a non, what we call a GMO, a non-GMO, genetically modified uh, organisms with, with soy protein. It's, For those of you who are concerned about GMOs, I've gone with egg protein. Now, and that's not the only reason I went with egg, egg, egg protein. If I did decide to put soy in here, I probably would put soy and egg because egg has very specific benefits that go beyond just its digestion rate. Egg protein is a medium digesting protein. It's somewhere in the middle of whey. It's not as fast as whey. It's not as slow as micellar casein. It's right there in the middle. makes a nice bridge. Egg protein is a very bio, what we call a bioavailable protein. It's, it's been referred to as the gold standard of protein, egg white, the egg white protein, which is what is in progen. And egg protein is another one of those proteins that bodybuilders have known to turn to long before we had progen or any other protein powder. Bodybuilders were consuming eggs and dairy because they're the most anabolic proteins you can get your hands on. So what is it about egg protein. Well, like I said, it's very bioavailable. The body is able to absorb and utilize it very well, much better than other proteins. So that means it's readily taken up and utilized for muscle growth and other processes in the body. But it also has a high percent of what we call sulfur-containing amino acids. Now, when I talk about sulfur-containing amino acids, I'm mainly talking about cysteine and methionine. Now, these sulfur-containing amino acids are critical for maintaining the structure of many proteins in the body, particularly collagen, which is important for joint health and recovery from all that hard training you're doing, as well as certain hormones, which are proteins. So, egg protein, obviously I'm a big believer in consuming eggs for breakfast. I've talked about this in numerous articles and videos, so you should be getting your eggs, your whole eggs, the rest of the day, mainly breakfast, whatever meal you want to have your whole eggs, but getting a bit of the egg white protein in Pro Gym provides a little bit more, provides, bridges that gap between the fast and the slow, and provides, like I said, a very bioavailable protein source and a rich source of those sulfur-containing amino acids. So, if you had any questions about the sources of the protein in ProGym, I hope that answered them for you. You now know that not only does ProGym tell you precisely the amounts of each one of those protein sources, but now you know the source of each one of those, why I chose them, why they are the highest quality protein that you can get on the market today, and why they're beneficial to you. Watch my other videos and read my other articles on ProGym, as well as protein powders in general and protein blends, articles like amino spiking and videos on that topic. All 
at jimsupplementscience.com.